Hello, it's me. This video is the final part of my Tower of God Season 1 series. Check out the other parts if you miss them. My future self will probably put a link to the relevant playlist somewhere on screen. Anyway, when we last left off, Rack tells the others about the strange disappearance of his large friend, and Dorsey responds to his panic by informing the homies that Big Boy and Rachel are probably in some kind of blood pact. Kuhn dislikes in Dorsey's blatant disregard for the sanctity of Rachel's true identity, and pieces out to reflect on the past, alone in his room. Red Hair Insect Lady warned him about Ho, while he was contemplating the odds of passing the exam from within his cube. A brief compilation of the past subterfuge ensues, then Kuhn ruminates on his Machiavellianism. Meanwhile, Yuri and her manservant continue their journey. Kuhn is visited by Rack, who is transubstantiated into a midget after insulting Yu Han for being small. Kuhn cannot mend his diminutiveness. As this is the case, Rack decides to seek help from Yoru instead. However, Kuhn is conflicted about his relationship with Yoru, considering that he may have lost his motive to continue climbing the tower. Speak of Turtle God's little angel, here he is right now, to inform them that Rachel is now a paraplegic. He vows to continue ascending the tower, reborn as Rachel's legs, without any other care in the world. Kun regrets not being as cool as Yoru, while he asks for their strength. Kun agrees fervently, so does Rack, but he's so small that Yoru doesn't notice. He goes on to ask a favor, hard cut to Serena pouring one out for her deceased hoe. The Kun squad visits his grave to give him a proper send-off. Everyone does too, which is kind of cool. Ho turns into a freaking solar panel. Somewhere in a field, Rachel breaks into tears while apologizing to Yorbo for abandoning him. She insists that he return the favor by leaving her. Yoru is shook, then demonstrates the depth of his love by comparing her likeness to that of a ray of light which pierced his dark, lonely world. This causes Richard to produce more juice and apologize continuously. These folks party hard on some sake. Loris thanks Selena for dragging him out of the crown game, then later, Serena leaves. Shibi Sulan tries to get her to stay, but she has a pretty solid reason for departing, bequeathing him her blade upon exiting. Kun visits Lero. In a dank cave, the Onigiri wizard speaks to his orb, revealing his nefarious intentions to recover Green April and Black March when he is confronted by Yu Han. Yui Handela-san reveals the Rice Ball's true name, Royal Enforcement Division Unit Number 67, Lopobia Rin. Lupu Rin menacingly unveils his mouth eyeballs in response, then summons a freaky cave worm. Tutan has no trouble with Lupubi's creature and calls him out on his intent to assassinate Anak. He then offers to assist, stating objectively that if there is an individual threat to the tower, he'll eat them. Yu Han invites the confused Marshmallow to coffee and awaits in excitement. Lyra walks in to report on his interrogation of Kun over the letter given to Ho. Kun used raw logic to explain that it must have been sent from one of the rankers. Han's coffee bowl breaks, and he ominously exits the office while stating that he hopes nothing else will go awry. Later, all these people pass the test. Rachel fails for being a cripple. So did this guy for not being a cripple. He is enraged and is eviscerated by Yu Han for his insolence. Kun coyly states that he isn't satisfied with the results either and insists that Michelle Light pass as well. Yu finds it amusing that Kun made a friend and rejects his rejection. Kun rejects his rejection's rejection, insisting that he take the administrator's test to unreject his rejection. Lero recalls telling Kun about how long ago King Jihad passed the administrator's test and was then made the ruler of the tower. Yu Han, startled by Kun's knowledge, warns him of the perils of this endeavor, compliments his confidence, then states that he doesn't meet the qualifications. To undergo the admin's test, one must have opened the door to the tower on their own, a feat only an irregular can achieve. Yoro goes, eh, hey, let me give it a shot, revealing his identity as an irregular to everyone in the room. Yu Han brings him into an alleyway, while the homies discuss the repercussions of associating with the regulars. Lero informs them that they are all faced with a pivotal decision. If they aid Yoru, they will be allowed to climb the tower by the quickest route, but become socially outcast. The Green Goblin refuses, and so does Kun. Hats and Rack dislike this, and vow to help Yoru, and Dorsey reveals that Kun was just playing hard to get, so that Rack gets a chance to explain why they should help. More big brain moves out here from Kun Kun. Anyway, 
Everyone wants to help regardless, except this guy, who is peer pressured into it by the others. Meanwhile, Yoru speaks with his gigantic spirit animal. It is omnipotent and believes Yoru to be tasty, but gets to the point by asking about his reason for climbing the tower. Yuhan whispers to Rachel that this is her last chance to climb. Then Yoru shows up to report that he has been allowed to take the big turtle's test. And so the next exam begins. Yorbu and Raphael are just chilling in a bubble, surrounded by aquatic phosphorescent thingies. Yuhan explains that in the next arc, the regulars will be hunted underwater. Yoru and Rachel will be hunted by dolphins while cosplaying as fish. These dolphins use Shinsu to entrap prey for their big growth queen. The goal is to have the lovers be eaten along with the other fish so that they get splooged back up onto the surface. Of course, the regular's job is to make sure that they aren't first stolen by Squib Squab the goblin and his giant suck worm. On top of this, the dolphin's natural enemy are Bidoofs, which must also be suppressed so that the dolphins may hunt freely. Additionally, there is this thing called the bolt that eats rankers sometimes. Shibi is nervous. Yoru encourages Rachel while Kun strategizes. They split up, which makes sense. Quant critiques Yuhan's test, but is impressed by the complexity of it. Yuri gets stuck on a massive cliff and decides to push Evan, her dutiful servant boy, into the abyss. Yoru informs Rachel on the deets of his relationship with Yuri. She makes this face, then laughs. I don't know what that means. Shibi is nervous. Kun asks him why he's helping Yoru, even after knowing the perils of this test. He has a flashback to Serena telling him that Yoru is the living embodiment of everything that they lost before climbing the tower. He simply doesn't want Yoru to have what's important taken from him. Suddenly, Hatch reports that Diddy Kong and Blarg have vanished. A strange bloodlust fills the air, and Shibi is attacked by the bull, who's already got a full mouth. Rachel and Yoru flirt, or something, while the bull becomes distracted. Shibi goes for his iconic move of declaring himself to be delicious. It doesn't work, so he pulls a blade and goes for the plunging attack. The bull is unaffected, but falls for his bait. He is eaten in a dramatic, slow motion fashion. Never mind. Anak and Endorsey have arrived. They quarrel briefly, but settle on a bet instead. They will each take five minutes to do battle with the monster. If Endorsey defeats it, then she will acquire ownership of the legendary princess weapons. If not, then she will become a slave to Anak. Smirk. Meanwhile, Rack yearns for combat with the bull. When the worms begin to slither into the no-no zone, Kun coordinates a surprise attack, and they get in position. The little mermaid and her devotee begin to be entrapped by the dolphin magic. They flirt some more. This child offers her pot up to the sky with an answer to one of Kun's big brain problems. And Dorsey continues her fight with the bull, but is caught by a noodle appendage. She breaks free without trouble, causing the bull to scream and flee. An act tags in and gives chase, with Endorsey lagging behind. Shibisu curses the air these willful women breathe. Lavia Wren number 67 eats pizza in delight, for the princesses have fallen for his trap. The child's fish creature discovers an underground tunnel with his sonar powers, much to Kuhn's satisfaction. He then asks a relevant question. Can people with her ability control other beings like dolphins or the bull? Hint hint, wink wink. His suspicions are confirmed. Yuhan places his bowl of coffee down. Endo is almost slimed on, bounces around some, then is tentacled again. The strength of its spaghetti is more effective this time around, and she is incapacitated. Anak is approached from the shadows by the police, who declares her to be an enemy of the state and regurgitates her mother's pendant. Anak is shook. She goes berserk. Worm sign. Yoru reveals the answer to the administrator's question. Rachel was his first thought, but the second was the times he spent at the cafeteria smiling with his friends. Rachel seems conflicted. Anak is fended off by some weird tongues, then run through by a secret, much thinner tongue. The spice begins to flow. Rack grows ever more impatient, and Hats is ambushed. The quake of green miscreant's rod alerts the goblins. They flee after being discovered, while Anak is toyed with. Green April is devoured, and she is tormented further. First with disheartening words, then with threats, and finally, with Endorsey's capture, Luigi Rin reveals that the underwater hunt was a setup from the start. Yuhan slurps on his bowl. Rin requests that Endorsey take this opportunity to kill the tower's parasite, which causes her eyeballs to vibrate. The Shinsu dolphins are getting along with it, while Yoru's fingies glow. Endorsey goes to fulfill her duty as a princess. Linguini Rin quivers in anticipation. Meanwhile, Shibi is on the hunt for the willful women. When he acts accidentally summons Yuri with his call. Anak desperately heals her gaping donut wound. Rachel begins to glow as well. Do it.
and Dorsey doesn't do it and instead decides to tag team. Kuhn is waiting for something. The princesses go nuts with their weapons, much to the surprise of the Onigiri police. Rack and his angry green sack flee from the goblin horde, but running doesn't suit the big dinosaur. He ramps elegantly across multiple platforms, soaring into the air, directly into the midst of the suckworm party. Ren fires his laser as a last resort, incapacitates both princesses, and threatens to snitch to Jihad. Things don't look too good here. I recognize that move. It's Shibi killing arts, and Yuri, come to save her sisters. Lopobia is shook and attempts to talk his way out of instant death. Yuri insists that she take over with his business, as Rack and Slimer are levitated to safety. The rice ball tries to gaslight Yuri, but instead invokes her wrath. He trembles in anticipation, but ultimately cannot control his violent impulses. His gross tongues are released from an unseemly bliss and instantly evaporate. Yuri goes for the kill move. Yoru flirts with Rachel some more. The princess failed to win the rice ball, though but earns an axe respect. Kuhn's plan is revealed to all. The goblin suckworms were tricked into slurping up all the Bidoofs after Laro cleverly collapsed to their secret tunnels. There is nothing quite like the effectiveness of domestic infighting. Kuhn is suddenly approached by his older doppelganger and decides to take a break. Laro is also approached by someone. Lero calls for an emergency, but his camera feeds are cut. Yuhan seems to expect as much, stating that since this test is run by the administrator, they do not possess the authority to intervene. Lero is suspicious. Kuhn's brother offers him to take him to see Princess Maria, declaring himself to be an outcast as well. Meanwhile, here he is bored, and Evan runs into Yuhan, who had prepared some bowls of coffee with the expectation of their arrival. He also expected them to be after Black March, and is fully prepared to turn a blind eye to their intrusion. Evan quickly uses his orb to instruct Yuri to tread carefully, as assisting an ex orphan in any way will be bad news for her reputation, and Dorsey offers to finish Ren off instead, insisting that if helping a friend is treason, then she is a traitor. Shibi agrees, but Yuri wisely stops them. Instead, her hammer boy annihilates the would-be assassin. Kun rejects his brother's invitation, declaring that Maria is no longer his motivation for climbing the tower. Hats arrives to protect his homie after deducing Kun's situation. Kun 2.0 is impressed with his collection of allies and pieces out. Are, are they gonna eat that? sword acquired. The pancake uses his last breaths to inform his opponents that he sent the bull after Yoru, who keeps flirting non-stop. Their bubble takes on laser fire, while Ren reveals his intention to not let the irregulars live. Yuri is mega peeved into next week, but Yuhan states that Yoru will fail if she intervenes, and Ak is determined to climb the tower with everyone. So is Endorsey. Yoru struggles to blast the bull, taking a tentacle to the face. Shibisu believes, but the bull is huge. Yuri is enthused at the thought of Yoru becoming strong while he is eaten whole like a pelican on a Thursday. Rachel is shook. The bull has a major indigestion from Yoru's golden ball of Shinsu, and he floats gracefully back to Rachel. The gross dolphin queen opens her sarlacc mouth. Yuri repossesses Green April, gives Shibi a bird leaf, and tells him to give it to Yoru with a message to visit the 77th floor. Evan recognizes a navigator and is shook. Yoru is excited to see stars with Rachel, and they romantically touch hands. Or not. That wicked birch tree just launched him into the ocean for some reason. She feels relieved. Hidon smirks though. Rachel has a flashback to their original parting, recalling her entry to the tower and Hadon's words. She believed that the tower was calling her, but it wasn't. She begged Hadoodle to give her a chance, so he did. A familiar fish is sighted. Rachel is vehemently opposed to Hadon's impossible test. However, as we know, Yoru didn't care. She was forced to watch, berated for being weak, and called out for wanting to be special. Her longing to see the stars was only a facade, masking the ugliness of her true intentions. Rachel's resolve was clear, however, and she was assigned a special test. If she kills Yoru with her own hands, Rachel will be allowed to climb the tower. Hadon assigned a companion who will serve her as a guard, and assurance of a free resurrection should she perish. I guess that's why he disappeared after Rachel was run through by Ho. The red-haired navigator was entrusted to oversee Yoru's development under the instruction of Yuhan. Every twist and turn of the exam was fraught with indecision and internal strife. As time passed, Rachel became ever more conflicted sinking further into her own weakness and jealousy over Yoru. Hadon's plans fall into place as she is used by those who are more powerful to drive their schemes. It was clearly tough for her to endure all of this. Yoru's poems from when they were hanging out in a field added to her cognitive dissonance. Yuhan's words refreshed her determination to climb, but she remained conflicted. At peak bubble hours, the time of reckoning arrived and she confronted her realization that Yoru had become the star that she wanted to be. Her jealousy overflowed as Yoru's light 
only accentuated her own darkness, and she awakens to an angry mob of regulars. She tells them about the bull, then succumbs to the goop. Later, Rachel is congratulated by the red-haired navigator. Lero reports that they were unable to find Yoru's body, but they all passed. Rack lets out a manly scream of despair as Lero goes to confront Yuhan. Hats ideates on his way to repay Yoru by suggesting that they climb with Rachel. Kun agrees with this. Rachel lets out a disturbing laugh in her darkened room. Lero was fired, so he decides to seek truth by climbing the tower. Meanwhile, Yuhan conceals the fact that Yoru remains alive. He offers a prayer for him with the homies. Kun scolds Rachel for her coldness in his own conniving way, and they are sent along. Yoru awakens from his moistened slumber to the navigator ready to do some navigation. He asks a million questions, all which the red-haired lady assures him will be answered if he reaches godhood at the top of the tower. She offers to train him, but Yoru proclaims that the answers he seeks are to be decided by him, not the tower. Yoru decides to climb and is welcomed to the Tower of God, and that's the end of season one. Also, this is probably Yoru with the ponytail. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, leave a scalding comment, or something like that. I have a Patreon if you have fallen for my cerebral charms. Thanks again. Uh, bye.